Hi guys, um, I'm going to show you something here. Uh, maybe some of you have seen it before and others haven't, but I'm sure everybody recognizes what this is. This is a VHS machine. And I just hauled this out of the closet. I've, I've got some tapes I've got to transfer over, and I just wanted to give it a quick go over before running it in and clean the heads and so forth before using it. I figured I'd give you a quick look inside one of these bad boys because not everybody's seen what the guts of one of these things were. They were actually quite marvels of of, of uh, technology of the day. I mean, surprised that the things actually even worked when you consider the complexity inside a video cassette recorder. This one is a Mitsubishi, and it is, this is considered to be one of the best machines ever built. And the reason they say that is because of the layout. Uh, the chassis itself here is a solid aluminum chassis. Now, the original VHS machines, they were all built on steel and aluminum chassis, but in, a, in an attempt to get the price down, this all became plastic on a lot of them, and, and uh, they just didn't last. This is what like, most people would consider the, the, the last of the great machines, and this is one of the best ones ever built. It's a Mitsubishi HSU. Uh, 65 and it has a lot of aluminum parts and not a lot of plastic. There's still a little bit of plastic in certain parts, but most of it's all aluminum. Now, when you load a tape on a VHS machine, this piece, this mechanism you see down here, this is actually the video head. And those little black things you see on the edge of the head as I'm turning it there, those are actually the video and the audio hi fi heads. If I get the camera in close, you can actually see them. See, those are the audio hi-fi and the video heads. Notice this little this is a little cleaning wheel when you put the tape in. This little cleaning wheel makes contact with the head drum that spins to clean out the, the heads to keep them a little clean or tries to keep them clean. Over here we've got the audio control array set. This is for the linear or the mono audio track. We've got the pinch roller and capstan shaft assembly over here. This is a loading motor. This motor here actually is what loads and unloads the tape. And inside here there are pins that pull the tape out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to load a cassette into this thing here. Now we're going to watch what happens when all these mechanisms fire up. You'll first see the loading motor start to turn down here. And then you'll see the tape get extracted from the cassette and wound around the head drum. So as I put the cassette in, there goes the cassette and the tape is pulled around the head drum 180 degrees. The head drum spins at 1800 revolutions per minute. Now when I press the play button, the tape starts to move and we have a picture on the screen. And this is an old tape. I like this. This tape would be at least 15 years old. There goes the SkyTrain. This is Vancouver. And this is the Molson Indy. We used to have an IndyCar road race here every year, every summer. For, I forget how many years it was here for, about 10 years, I guess. Um, this recording, I'm going to say, is probably 96, somewhere in there. I think the race started just after Expo. This is the old Expo 86 land. It's it's now all been developed, so there's no more race here anymore. But uh, for for about 10 years, I think, after the after Expo 86, we had the uh, Molson Indy. Nine or ten years. Anyway, um, this is a recording I made off of the TV, and it's the Molson Indy race. So this tape is going to find its way archived onto a DVD just to, to keep, but this just shows how well the old VHS tapes did hold up. So here we go. This is the mechanism here. Um, and how it's playing that video back is the, those heads are scanning the tape that are in this, this metal drum here. And that gives you the high writing speed that was required. So that's the inside of a VHS machine. This has been the later generation of machine. When I go into fast forward and rewind on these, the tape stays fully loaded. As you can see, the tape is moving fast there. When I go into rewind, Again, the, the tape stays fully loaded. All it does is it releases the tension. You can see the uh, you can see the tension arm here, releasing the tension from the tape when I go into high speed. And 
rewind. That horrible noise is actually one of the plastic rollers inside the cassette that's screeching. This tape is as old as the hills, as they say. So let's eject the tape and you'll see what happens in reverse as, it, as the tape gets threaded back into the uh, cassette. And the tape gets ejected. So that's it. That's a... Uh, the guts of a VCR, an old VHS, or actually I guess this is more one of the more modern VHS. Uh, look for future videos, I'm going to dig out my old beta machine. And we'll, we'll put up a video showing how the beta machines, uh, how they threaded the tape and how they differed. The beta machines always kept the tape threaded, like this machine does. The early VHS machines used to thread and unthread the tape when you went into play or stopped it. And that's why the early machines could not give you a picture when you were in fast forward. The beta machines always kept the tape threaded, but it's the way that they thread the tape was different. It's a larger head drum on a beta machine, and just the actual mechanism that threads the tape is totally different. So we're going to find a beta machine and tear it down and show you how that works on a future video.